Okay, 8.5, solving exponential equations. Okay, um, so a couple things here. We already did something like this where if the bases are the same, you cancel them out and deal with the exponents, so m equals n. Okay, um, what else? Same thing with the logs. We could cross off logs and m equals n. Okay, so let's go through some examples. So 5x equals 53. So we have the x, now this is just one that you've done already. So we have x in the exponent. So we want to remove it from the exponent so we can convert to logarithmic form. So start with the base, go across the 53 equals x. So we have log base to 5, so 53 equals x. And now we substitute that into our calculator. So log 53 divided by log 5 gives us roughly rounded 2.5 for x. What about the base? Is that the base? Okay, so B. So I, and I, we've had a question like this um, in a previous lesson where I did it, I, I showed you a question doing two different methods, and this is where one of the methods is going to work. So right now we have uh, x's in both exponents. Okay, so converting it won't do anything. Um, so we have to look into something else. So if you look at the base of four, the base is 64, um, four goes into 64, okay? So we can convert this 64 into a base of four. So we have to figure out how many times does four go into 64? It goes four, 16, 64, okay? So like powers. So we're gonna convert the 64 into a power of uh, into four to the power of three. So we're going to change the sixty-four is now four to the power of three. So convert it, and then we carry down the x as well. The reason why we do this now we have the same base. When we have the same base, we can cancel out the actual bases and deal with just the exponents. So we have x plus five equals 3x. And now we solve. Subtract x on both sides or bring it over. So we have 5 equals 2x. And then divide by 2. And this so happens to be 2.5 as well. So 2.5 equals x. Okay, moving on to the next one. So 4 to the power of 2x, and then equals 8 to the power of x minus 3. So once again, we're going to convert them, but you can't, 8 will never be a base of 4, because 4 squared is 16. So what we have to do in this case is both of them could be converted to bases of 2. So 4 get broken down to 2 to the power of 2, and 8 becomes 2 to the power of 3. So convert 4 is the same as 2 to the power of 2, and 8 is the same as 2 to the power of 3. So you might be asking, when do I do this step? It usually happens when we have x's in both of the uh, exponents. Okay, then we're going to carry down the 2x. So we're going to multiply the exponent by 2x, and then we carry down the x minus 3 for the other power. Now we have the same bases cross them off, and deal with just the exponents. So we have 2 times 2x, which is 4x. Then we're going to foil this one. 3x, sorry, 3 times x is 3x, and 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. Now solve for x. Subtract 3x from the right and the left. 4x minus 3x is just 1x, or x and we have negative nine as our answer. Okay, moving on to number two. Solve this equation. Okay, so round to the nearest hundredth. So you know here that it's not going to be a nice number. Okay, 
Okay, so we have 4 to the power of 2x minus 1 and 3 to the power of x plus 2. Okay, there is no possible way that we can get them to the same base. Well, there, you can, but you're dealing with decimals, so we're not going to do that. So what we're going to do something else instead. So we're, now we're going to apply our logs to this here. So we're going to put a log in front of the 4, and we're going to put a log in front of the 3. Okay, when we do that, we're able to then take the exponent and bring it to the front of the equation. So we end up getting 2x minus 1 times log 4 equals x plus 2 times log 3. Okay, so I told you before, when you bring it to the front, we end up having multiplication. Okay, so now we're going to have 2x minus 1 times log 4 and x plus 2 times log 3. So at this step, we are now going to distribute the log 4 to the brackets. There are multiple ways to do this one. I'm just going to show you the one that I'm comfortable with. So we have 2x log 4 minus log 4. So 2x log 4, and then a negative 1 times log 4 is negative log 4. x times log 3 is x log 3. And 2 times log 3 is 2 log 3. Okay, so now we're here. It looks kind of funny. But now we have x's here and here. Okay, so we have the x's outside of the brackets and now in the numerator. So what we can do is bring the x's to one side. So I'm going to subtract x log 3 from this side and get it onto this side. And then bring this log negative log 4 over by adding log 4. So now we have 2x log 4 minus x log 3 equals 2 log 3 plus log 4. Okay, so now we have an x times log 4 and an x times log 3. Sorry about the glare being in the way there. Um, so now we have x's in both of these, so we're going to actually factor out an x now. So we can have both just one single x. So we're going to factor out an x from here and here. So we're going to take out an x from here, so it's x, and we're left with 2 log 4 Take an x from there, and you're left with log 3. Okay, and lastly, we want to get x by itself, so we need to remove this whole bracket here. Just want to make sure that the glare, you guys can see that. Okay, so we're going to remove this bracket now. Since we're multiplying, we're going to bring this, we're going to cancel out by dividing, so that's now on the other side. divided by 2 log 4 minus log 3. So this is gone, and we're just left with our x on the left side. And now you guys plug this into your calculator and solve. So 2 log 3 equals plus log 4 gives me 1.556 and at the bottom 2 log 4 subtract log 3 gives me 0 0.727 and I get a final answer of 2.14 nearest hundredth is the second decimal place so we're rounding two decimal places, so the answer is 2.14. Last one. Okay, if you, so this goes right from grade 11. If you invested $1,000 into an account, and the account pays 
compounded semi-annually, how long would it take you for your money to double? Okay, so I'm not sure if you remember this one, but it's A equals P, one plus I to the power of N. So A is the final amount, P is your principal, I is your interest, and N is your compound periods in years usually. So years times by the compound periods. Okay, so we invested a thousand, so that's our principal, that's the original amount. Okay, uh, we're looking for how long, so that's going to be N, because that's time, so we're going to leave N as it is. Um, it pays 5% semi-annually. So if you remember, what semi-annually means twice a year. So if you remember from grade 11, what we do is we take the interest and divide by the compound periods. So we have 0 0.05 as our interest rate, but this is going to happen twice throughout the year. So we have to divide it by 2. So you get 0 0.0025. Sorry. 0.025. Okay, because this is going to happen 2.5% halfway through the year and another 2.5% at the end. Together it's 5%. So that is going to be our I. 0.025. Okay, so if it was compounded quarterly, you would divide by 4. If it was compounded monthly, you would divide by 12. Um, if it's weekly, you divide by 52. Okay, and the last thing is, is how long would it take your money to double? So that's going to be our final amount, is when it doubles. So if we start with 1,000, then we have to get to 2,000. All right, so first step here is let's divide, get rid of the 1,000. So we're going to divide by 1,000. So we get 2 equals add this together, 1.025 to the power of n. Convert it into logarithmic form. So start with the base, go to the 2, to the n. So we get log base 2, 1.025 equals n. Oh, sorry, I was wondering why this is not working. 1.025 to the 2. I got it at this point. My numbers didn't make sense. Log 2 divided by log 1.025, and I get an answer of 28. Okay, so that would be 28 months. But, trick question here is because the n, since we divide it by 2 here, Technically, this should have been 2n, okay? So whenever you do, we divide your interest by, you multiply by your n by, okay? Because n represents years, so we're doing this twice a year, so it's 2n. So if we carry the 2n down, we get this. So this is not n, this is actually 2n, okay? So it's technically not 28 months, we have to divide by 2 at the end. It's because it's compounding. So we get, end up getting 14 months. Sorry, 14 years to double. So 14 years. Sorry, not 28 months, 28 years divided by 2, which is 14 years. Okay, homework is here, page 485, 1 to 3, 4C, 5, 6, 8, ACE. 10C, 12, 14, A.